what's up everybody? Night 8 of the G1 Climax. This is from Osaka, Japan. Osaka is the third largest city in Japan. Population of over 19 million people. It's one of the largest cities in the world. Um, this is from the Bodymaker Coliseum. Um, this arena holds about 8,000, so this is one of the biggest places that they've had a show in the G1 Climax tournament so far. And uh, it seemed like a big time show. You know, it wasn't the best show of the tournament, but it was another amazing show. And uh, it just had kind of a big time feel to it, especially with the main event of Nakamura vs. Tanahashi. Um, a little bit more about Osaka. It uh, is known as the nation's kitchen in Japan. I guess there's an old saying that uh, everyone in Kyoto wastes their money on... Was it clothes? Whatever. I guess people spend a lot of money on food in Osaka. And uh, some people consider it to be the greatest culinary city in the entire world. And, uh, yeah, it seems like a really cool place. But, uh, let's get into this show. The first match of the night was Tomohiro Ishii versus Davy Boy Smith Jr. And, uh, Ishii got a big win here. He got the brain buster. So that was a lot of fun. Uh, Davy Boy just looks so much bigger than him. And, uh, that's really all I remember. But I'm happy that Ishii got the win. Um, then we had Hiroyoshi Tenzon versus Toru Yano. This was a lot of fun. Similar to the Carl Anderson versus Yano match from earlier in the show. Um, I mean, earlier in the tournament. Uh, just a lot of goofy, fun comedy stuff going on. Uh, Yano went to low blow Tenzon near the end, and then the referee caught him, so Tenzon low blowed him. That got a good reaction from the crowd, and then Tenzon got the win with a tap out from his Anaconda Vice. Um, if you saw my last video, the Night 7 review, uh, I went so in-depth uh, just with the play-by-play -play and the notes, all the notes I took. I took like five pages of notes front and back of the papers, <clears throat> and uh, I definitely went a little bit overboard there, so um, this time I didn't take any notes at all, which was probably also a mistake. I know I'm going to forget like some, some witty criticism I wanted to make and then... <laughs> I'm going to hate myself because I didn't write anything down. But, at least you have to look at less at the top of my head. Next match was Yuji Nagata versus Shelton Benjamin. Man, Shelton Benjamin is... He's really bad. He's He's been a bad pro wrestler this entire tournament. He just... He has no charisma. He never seems like he's in a fight. It never seems like he wants to win. All his facial expressions and mannerisms are so forced and lazy and... There's just no creativity there, there's no creative spark in him, and it seems like even when he's doing something like running the ropes or... Every movie hits, there's just no intensity, and it seems like he doesn't even want to be there. And I mean, this guy was a, a decorated college wrestler, and when he hit a German suplex in this match, it looked like he just flopped onto his back. He didn't arch at all, he didn't, uh... He didn't look athletic. <laughs> I mean, his body, it looks athletic, but, uh... He just seems like he doesn't give a shit these days. But uh, thankfully, Yuji Nagata got the win with a crossface in this match. And Yuji Nagata's awesome. He tried his best. But uh, Shelton Benjamin, man, he's just... I think he's the worst wrestler in the entire tournament. Alright, then we had Satoshi Kojima versus Doc Gallows. I thought this was Doc Gallows' best match of the tournament so far. And it was uh, no thanks to him. It was all Kojima, man. Kojima is so flamboyant. He's like a magician or a rock star, or a drag queen, like he just, he's so theatrical. I really love the way he rips off his elbow pad when he goes for the clothesline, because he goes like this, and then there's an anticipation in the crowd, and he milks it, and he milks it, there's more anticipation, and then he rips it off so fast and throws it, it's like it just vanishes into the thin air, like a magician, like I was saying before, and he's just, he's the opposite of Sheldon Benjamin, he's always so intense. And, uh, yeah, it might be a little bit cheesy and over-the-top, but I would take cheesy and over-the-top over, the top over uh, boring any day. And, uh, yeah, I thought those Doc Gallows best match so far because it was really short and Kojima was in control most of the time. And he got the big win with the clothesline to the back of the head, Lariat to the front. Kojima got the win, so uh, I was happy so far in the night. You know, we had uh, Ishii got a win. Uh, Nagata and Kojima got win, so it was a good way to start the show. And then the match before intermission was Tetsuya Naito versus Hiroki Goto, and this match was awesome. This might have been my favorite match of the whole show, although there was a lot of really great matches. Naito was, uh, 
really playing the heel role here, um, really being super heelish. Like, uh, every time he was hitting uh, some of his signature spots, he'd turn to the crowd, you know, point to his ears, smile, and kind of snicker at them. Uh, one thing I really liked is uh, Naito was in control in the beginning, and uh, Goto had managed to take control on the outside, probably threw him into the guardrail or something. That happens almost every match. But when Naito came back into the ring, he hit a big flurry of punches on Goto, headlock takeover, and Goto just immediately leg scissored his head and got back in control. And I like that. Like It made Goto seem so confident and just badass, the way he just let Naito punch him a bunch of times, put him in a hold, yeah, whatever, just countered him so fast. I thought that was awesome. And uh, yeah, Naito was just a treat in this match. These guys, with Naito working as a heel and Goto working as a face, they're just a really awesome pairing. And uh, yeah, by the end of this match, uh, the crowd was just losing their shit. They were so hot for this match. I was, I looked up where Goto is from, but it doesn't look like he's from Osaka, but they were treating him like a hometown hero. And uh, I was informed by Tommy Livingstone, who uh, commented on my video that uh, for some reason fans in Tokyo and Osaka really hate Naito. So I guess that's why he was being heelish. Uh, but yeah, this was just uh, really awesome stuff. Really good. Uh, Goto got the win with the Shoten, which uh, was a pretty big upset, and I, I thought that was pretty awesome. It was, uh, it was a feel-good moment for him to get the win there. Alright, so coming back from intermission, we had AJ Styles versus Lance Archer, and this was Lance Archer's best match of the tournament. Uh, maybe it's because him and AJ Styles, uh, I'm sure they wrestled a few times before in TNA. Um, Lance Archer just played a really good base for AJ Styles. I, it seems like he works well when he's going up against a high flyer, and uh, AJ worked over his leg for most of the match, and uh, one moment I really liked is he was working over Lance Archer's leg, he had him down on his knees, AJ hit the ropes, looked like maybe he was going to hit a drop kick on him or something, and then Archer, since he's so tall, was able to just clothesline him to the floor from his knees. And I thought that was really cool, and I was hoping there'd be more moments like that, where, uh, you know, his leg's damaged, but he's just such a huge guy, he could still hurt AJ and be dangerous. But, uh, he didn't sell the leg too great, I mean, he even did a moonsault in this match, uh, he was running off the ropes a lot and stuff, which, kind of a pet peeve of mine, but... It was still a good match, and uh, well, another moment I really liked is Lance Archer went for a choke slam, and AJ got out of it by doing a backflip, which is crazy, like a really strange but awesome way to get out of a choke slam. And it ended with uh, AJ getting a submission on Lance Archer. I'm pretty sure it was either the trailer hitch that Jamie Noble used to use, whatever Edge's finisher was, or the lasso from El Paso that uh, Eddie Guerrero used to use. It was some finisher that never really got over, but AJ uh, locked in some crazy leg submission. It was one of those three uh, where their legs were all tied up and he locked it in so fast uh, and uh, Archer tapped out and it was just a really good ending and a really good match. Okay, so then we had Minoru Suzuki versus Togi Makabe and this was a lot of fun as well. I was hoping there would just be a really masculine slugfest between these two, but it was actually a bit more methodical. Uh, Makabe was working over Suzuki's leg for most of the match, and a moment that I thought was pretty cool was uh, he was stomping on Suzuki's leg, and then Suzuki did the macho thing where he's like, come on, come on, and he put his leg up like, come on, kick me in the leg. And uh, I know I've seen that spot before, but uh, it doesn't happen too often, I always think that's kind of cool. Just a, a neat variation on uh, the whole pissing contest thing that always happens in Japan. But uh, Suzuki did a really good job selling the leg. You know, for two bruisers, like these guys are, you know, their characters are very tough and scary. They're probably like portrayed as the two scariest guys in the tournament, I would say. Uh, they both sell really well for having that type of character. Like they're both really sell very believably, which is kind of different <coughs> for a character like that. Sorry. I got like some pistachios in my throat or something. <clears throat> But yeah, uh, Suzuki, uh, at one point, he was uh, trying to make a comeback, went to run off the ropes, and he stumbled like his leg was hurt, you know, and then Makabe was kind of laughing at him. So Makabe ran to hit the ropes, and then all out of nowhere, Suzuki ran up and drop kicked him. And I thought that was a really awesome moment. Uh, at the end of the match, Suzuki, he got his, uh, you know, rear naked choke in, where he flips him over and uh, starts choking him on the floor. And uh, this was a really good moment of drama. You know, it seems like... I'm not sure if I've ever seen anyone get out of that uh, 
predicament, you know, when Suzuki has you and flips you over and has you in the rear naked choke on the ground. It seems like no one ever gets out of that. Maybe Tanahashi did in their Tokyo Dome match, I can't really remember, but it was a good moment of drama because Makabe lasted a lot longer than most people do, but eventually he did uh, pass out. And his face was like turning really pale and white, it seemed like Suzuki really was squeezing the crap out of him, so that was cool. It was cool to get, see Suzuki get a win after his uh, awesome performance the night before. Alright, then we had Katsuyori Shibata versus Tomoaki Hanma. This was awesome. Uh, Hanma, he's probably going to end up being the MVP of the tournament in my eyes. Uh, I've just had such a blast watching all of his matches. You know, uh, I was commenting before in another video about his voice, how it sounds so hoarse, you know, almost like Cobra Commander from G.I. Joe. And it's because uh, he actually has a crushed voice box. Um, he started out his career in Big Japan. Um, on the Wikipedia, it says he was the first person to ever use light tubes in a match. I mean, I don't know if that's true, but uh, he used to be a real crazy hardcore wrestler, and uh, I guess he got his voice box crushed, which is why his voice sounds like that. But man, this was just a blast. Uh, um, oh, you know what? Back to the notes thing, just real quick. In the Suzuki and Makabe match, Suzuki went for his arm bar that he does hanging in the ropes. Makabe picked him up and just started punching him in the head. That was a cool moment. Sorry. Back to Hanma versus Shibata. This match was flipping awesome. Forking great. And uh, one moment I really liked is Shibata. He uh, had knocked down Hanma. He went for the penalty kick. Hanma caught it. And then Shibata was just kind of like laughing like cockily. Come on. And hopping on one leg. He just started slapping Shibata in the face. So hard. This match was like retardedly stiff. And... Uh, but Hanma was fired up, fired up, fired up, and finally he dropped the leg and slapped Shibata. And Shibata fell down to the ground, and, and I just I screamed when that happened, actually, to be honest with you. And Shibata, he actually, I think it was some of his best selling of the entire tournament so far. Like, he had this look in his face, but his eyes got really wide, like, damn, you know, this guy is tough. And uh, it, it was just uh, a great match, which uh, Hanma really playing the underdog role so great. He uh, went for his top rope uh, free fall headbutt, and uh, Shibata put his feet all the way up, and Hanma did not uh, pull back at all. He just free falled with his face straight into his feet, and uh, that was really brutal. And the ending finally came with uh, Shibata getting the go to sleep penalty kick on Hanma, and uh, yeah, it's probably a toss up between this and the Naito and Goto match. Uh, not sure, but both were really, really awesome. Uh, Okay, then we had Kazuchika Okada versus Yujiro Takahashi. This match started off a bit slow, kind of a typical Takahashi match where he's uh, in control, being a heel, smiling and licking his lips and being a gross weirdo the whole time. Uh, a couple moments I really liked is, uh, at one point, Okada, you know how he does a top rope drop kick? It's not him jumping off the top rope, it's his opponent on the top rope and he drop kicks them out of the ring. He was going for that. Oh, Yujiro was set up there, and right as he was about to leap, Yujiro just kicked him in the face, and it got a lot of boos, and it just seemed like the timing on that was really good, and I liked that. And there was another moment where uh, Okada, he likes to hit this, you know, snapmare, and then jumps off the ropes and hits a drop kick to the guy's head. He was going for that, and Yujiro just rolled out of the ring, like, very casually, and that got a lot of boos. And uh, for the be beginning portion of the match, that's uh, those are the parts that really stood out to me. But near the end... Uh, Yujiro hit a really nasty, awful waffle. I, I thought that was the end, and the commentators were freaking out when he hit that. But Okada kicked out, and uh, the last uh, like two minutes of this match were really good, uh, and the crowd was really hot, and Yujiro got a lot of offense in, but eventually Okada got the win with the Rainmaker. Pretty brutal one. And uh, this was got to be pretty damn good by the end, but the beginning was a bit slow. Alright, then we had our big main event, Shinsuke Nakamura versus Hiroshi Tanahashi. You know, the pairing of these two has never really been my favorite, and I'm a big fan of both guys, but for whatever reason, when they get together, I guess they just usually have the type of match that's not my favorite. I like matches that kind of just start off really hot and heavy and are unpredictable, and I feel like a lot of their matches are just very classical, you know, epic style match with uh, lots of slow mat work in the beginning and uh, kind of build and build and build to a bunch of big moves. But, uh, you know, 
these guys have both gotten so, so much better. It's crazy how hot New Japan is right now. Because I remember back in like 2009, I was ordering all kinds of Japanese shows all the time from IVP videos, and I would get videos from Noah and Dragon Gate and Big Japan, and New Japan was always the shows that I looked least forward to. Because they had so many guys on the roster, you know, like uh, Nakanishi and Yano was getting a big push back then, and they, they just didn't focus as much on the wrestling as the other Japanese companies. And even though they had Tanahashi and Nakamura and Goto, they were not nearly as good as they are nowadays, man. These guys have improved so much, especially in their characters. They both just have so much more characters in their matches now. And uh, it seems like ever since they got Okada to win the title, the whole company's been, like, invigorated. And, uh, man, all these new faces in here, like Hanma and Ishii and... Uh, Naito getting his push and Shibata, they really make such a huge difference. It's crazy how much of a difference like four or five new guys into the company make. And it makes guys who've been around forever like Makabe and Suzuki and Nakamura and Tanahashi, it makes them seem like new characters too, just because they're facing off against these uh, new foils. But uh, back to this match, it was a great match. It was a fantastic match. They pulled out a lot of stuff they don't do often. Uh, like Tanahashi hit a reverse sling blade. Uh, Nakamura hit a Bomiye off the top rope to the back of Tanahashi's head and a running Bomiye, but he kicked out of both of those, and Tanahashi eventually got the win with a roll-up out of nowhere, which was cool. And this was a great match, but, you know, I've seen these guys wrestle so many times, and even beyond that, I feel like just Tanahashi versus Nakamura, for some reason, whatever reason, it's never really done it for me. But, uh, uh... What was I going to say? You know what the thing is with the Bomiye? I'm not sure which which version is supposed to be like the ultimate death version. That Like when he hits it this way, that's when you're done. Because it, it's tough to tell, you know. Off the top rope to the back of the head, that seems like it could be the death version. But that was the first one he hit and Tanahashi kicked out. Then he hit the running version, which I guess you can make an argument that's more dangerous because he's getting momentum from running. But that didn't get the win either. So uh, is it the one where he drops his knee down like a knee drop? I don't know, but if anybody knows, tell me which version of the Bomiye is supposed to be like the ultimate killer version. So, uh, right now, Nakamura has, is 5-2, and two, and Tanahashi's 5-2, and two, Okada's 5-2, and two, Shibata's 5-2, and two, and AJ Styles is 5-2. and two. So these are all the people near the top. You know, Okada versus Shibata, that could be an interesting final, or more likely maybe uh, for a third place match. Uh, let's see, Nakamura versus AJ Styles? Hmm, I'm sure that'd be a great match, but it doesn't really seem like a money match. Well, we're still a little ways off. Uh, I'm a little behind, I gotta catch up on Night 9, and uh, I'll give you a little more speculation then. But anyways, it's been fun, guys. See you again soon.